All right, so we're uh, going to call the meeting to order. It's uh, Monday, June 17th, the Wartown Select Board, and uh, we are missing Ray tonight. He's on uh, he Ray is, but he's not going to be here. Um, so let's go ahead and start with uh, public comment. So we have a few people, so let's... Uh, who would like to go first? <laughs> Peter, Peter want to go first? Sure. All right, Peter Langella, thanks for, thanks for having me again. Um, I wrote some things down just to keep, my, keep me contained here. Um, as you may or may not know, the uh, HUUSD board is moving at lightning speed on what they're calling a new pre-K through 12 model. Despite our community's efforts and ask for a slower, more transparent, and more research-based process, the board has set forward to choose three models that they will have the district admin team cost out over the summer. They hope to link the, the final chosen model that they will pick in the fall to a hardwood renovation bond for next town meeting day, March of 2020. The three options are sending all students in grades five through eight in the entire district, including Moortown, to Cross a Brook Middle School. Uh, Pre-K through four services would happen at Thatcher Brook, Warren, and Waitsfield. Moortown would be repurposed to only include pre-K, the Mecca program, and they would move the central office there, which means that the elementary school as we know it would cease to exist, and they would close Faston School. The second option is once again all fifth through eighth graders in the entire district to cross the Brook Middle School. Uh, Pre-K through four services would be at Thatcher Brook and three to be determined schools in the valley. One school would close, which includes more town on that list of possibles. The third option um, is all fifth through eighth graders um, at Cross, uh, sorry, sorry, all seventh and eighth graders at, at Cross at Brook. So the so more town uh, student residents would switch from doing Harwood seventh and eighth grade to Cross at Brook. Um, Thatcher Brook, Moortown, Waitsfield, Warren would stay the same and Faston, Faston would close. Um, and so in two of the three models, Moortown um, could potentially be closed. In one of the model, Moortown students are still uh, changing schools. So Moortown is, is uh, greatly affected. Now, a, a few things to consider um, are that the board um, just really hasn't done their research. They've, they've come up with their own ideas of what these plans should look like. They've trusted the superintendent to be the only data point that they use. And so I just wanted to, I think I've spoken to you about most of these research studies before, but I'll just remind you of a few of them of what, what could happen. So a lot of this research was done by an organization called the Rural School and Community Trust, which did extensive uh, looks at consolidations and closures in the, the 80s and 90s and, and the first decade of the 2000s and published a lot of stuff that around 2010, 2011. So research from West Virginia's consolidation efforts over several decades shows that longer student commutes mean that students take part in fewer co-curricular co experiences and low-income students are most severely affected by the longer bus rides. Research after New York, Iowa, and Minnesota school closures in the 90s show that on average, communities that lost schools lose population, have lower property values, lower per capita incomes, a less equal distribution of income, more per capita income from public assistance, and, more, and, and higher child poverty rates. Uh, researching further, a German study I read based on data from Denmark, which is um, kind of a nice Vermont comparison on many, many uh, points, illustrate that students who experience school consolidation, and especially students who are exposed to school closings, actually have academic declines for a number of years after that event. Um, and so I think that this would just be terrible for our community in, in uh, uh, so many ways, all the way from you know, our, our longest, uh, our residents who have been here the longest, who have, you know, have children who are, haven't been in the school for a long time, all the way down to our earliest uh, kids in, in preschool. Um, the other thing that I, I want you to be aware of 
is that the board is trying to tie these plans to this bond vote in 2020 that is mostly about a, a hardwood renovation, but could potentially include Thatcher Brook and Cross of Brook additions to make room for these for these changes. So, um, and, and all of them are predicated on closures. And so, what I think may not be legal, and I, I hope to try to find that out, but you may want to try to find that out too, is that I'm not sure how they can tie a bond vote in 2020 to a plan that includes closures that they're not able to do based on their articles of agreement until July 1st of 2021, which would mean that in on the day of the bond vote in next March, there would be some school board elections. So there would be some switching of people, presumably, mm -hmm. and then maybe even again in 2021 before they get to that July part. And so I'm not sure how they could say, here's our plan. We can't enact all of it for a couple of years, but um, we, we're guaranteeing that we'll vote on it when the people might not even be the same. So that, that's, a, that's kind of a weird layer that I'm, I'm not sure the legality of. Um, so that, that's really all I have to say. Um, to be completely blunt, I think it's a disaster, and I think it uh, could really have, have unbelievable ramifications for the future of our town. Um, and I think that, I'll, I'll just speak for myself, I, I could project that this is probably in the minds of other people, but I'll only share my own opinion is that like, I, I wouldn't be here. I, I would not have been you know, a young person, moved to the town, started a family, built a home, mm -hmm. um, if, if, if we didn't have an elementary school. And I, I'm guessing that many other people probably, probably feel the same way, so thank you. Thanks, Peter. So may I address that for a moment? Um, I'm pleased that we have a school board now. Let me put you on the spot here a little bit, Kristen. Um, how, how, how is this? Based on the direction that you have received as a board, uh, I think from most community members, certainly here in town, but as some of the other things I've watched on TV is to go slow, transparent. Um, how do we end up here so quickly? Well, first, I want to say that I'm 100% not in favor of moving five and six at Valley Schools. And all my votes had I, I, all the options. I voted no on anything that moved those kids out of the Valley. I'm not 100% in favor of them going across it. And I said to the board that I have legitimate concerns that too many changes, too fast, too soon, like potentially moving the kids out of Harwood to cross at the 7th and 8th potentially closing a school in the valley, moving the kids from five and six. I said, I was, I'm very concerned about that. So I'm not in favor of any of that. Um, I also, just so you know, the only option that I voted yes to was D. That was the only one that I wanted um, uh, modeled out. Other than that, I voted no. And the ones I did vote yes on didn't pass. So just to put, I wanted to make sure. Sure, I'm not trying to. No, but I just wanted, I wanted you guys to know where I was coming from and, and what I'm in favor of and not in favor of at all. Mm -hmm. So I do think, you know, reflecting back, I think that um, I would have, I don't, honestly, I, I, there was this timeline that got set, that got put out, and I personally feel that the voting for the three to five final plans could have waited another two weeks, potentially, to get the, you know, solicit feedback from community members, to do some self-reflecting, and then voted on it next week. But I, I don't, honestly, I don't know how did, that... Did, when it's presented to you, is, is, is there a goal in mind? I mean, if you could just help me out with the, the, the thought process of where you're going and the, the reasons behind that as a board, and, and then, where are these solutions? Who came up with the solutions? And how do they fit? You mean like the scenarios? The scenarios. So it started with, uh, a few weeks ago, brainstorming. So we were able to go around and put out scenarios that each board member thought were great. And it was just one meeting where it was brainstorming. And then I believe that, um, I'm trying to get process here, I think that led to another meeting where uh, they were kind of grouped together, very similar ones, were kind of color-coded, grouped together, 
and then I think there was some discussion. You got docs that you felt were uh, no goes for you, and ones that you were more in favor of. And these orange dot ones end up being ten that people were in favor of. That the administration, we got a packet that um, kind of gave a very brief overview of like if you were to do this, this is you know the scenario. I, if you'd like to see some, I brought it with me. If you'd like. To. Take I guess because like, again I'm looking for that goal. What is the ultimate? I think the just goal, to close schools, consolidate, so save I, money. What? So what I, I think the goal is to um, my personal thing. I think the goal is to save taxpayer money so that we can get it, so people will be in favor of voting for the bond. If you want to boil it down, that's my personal mm -hmm. feeling because what I heard at least one board member say that which really bothers me is the fact that the first thing when it comes to kind of redesign we have to show taxpayer savings it's not about what's best for the kids and that's like so it to me personally i think that's what it boils down to you know the superintendent goes we can't sustain this can't sustain this can't sustain this they're on this kick that we need to move the kids from seventh and eighth um, do I think that maybe people could get behind that potentially? I, you know, I, I'm, what can't we sustain? sustain? Um, the four schools with declining enrollment, with respect, like with Basin and how much it is to operate the schools, and that now they're getting trying to get behind. Um, well, uh, the administration and I think maybe the principals. I, I feel that putting all fifth through eighth grade together is ideal. No, I mean, no, I mean, that's... I mean, is... Well, I'm sorry, excuse me, according to the superintendent. Mm -hmm. I think that, I think the questions you're asking are really important, and I'm not sure that they're, that those have even been clarified, you know, as far as what is the problem we're trying to address, and, and why are these the solutions? I, I'm just, I'm just not sure. Um, it seems like we have a solution in, in you know, Searching for a problem as opposed to a, you know, being driven by by the problem. So, um, I, I just don't know yet. So, just I, 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 that's a great question, and I think there's a lot of people that would like clarity on that. I don't think any one of us can really clearly answer what is this all being driven by. Because, quite frankly, even if we cut ten million dollars in our budget, there's no guarantee that that's going to reduce anybody's property tax rates, as far as I understand. Not only that, but certain options don't address issues. For example, there's 50 plus kids in the Waterbury area that have can't get into the school district for preschool. Because, you know, so no, there's only one option that addresses that, and that's to repurpose more town. There's also doesn't address the fact that Thatcher Brook has lunches that start at 1045 in the morning. And, and in order to accommodate all the kids, they have to start lunch at 10.45 in the morning. So maybe an option, address that by doing kitchen renovation, um, but there isn't issues that address that school, certain legitimate things. And I, we did this kind of small group discussion. I said, kids who live in the district should be allowed to a school, you know, at certain preschool. I mean, like, well, the private daycare said, oh, no, 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 I, I understand that, but the parents shouldn't be denied and then have to seek out their own uh, private schooling for their children. They should be allowed to go to preschool in the district. I mean, that's my own personal feeling. I mean, that's, anyway. Yeah. So there's some legitimate issues that aren't being, that aren't being addressed. In fact, I'm meeting with the uh, co-chair, Terry, tomorrow. I'm going to be addressing some of these, my concerns with her. But, um, so, yeah, I personally feel that it's, um, you know, way back when we had a forum, way back when the, you know, stuff happened and there's a forum that the superintendent was there. And she keeps talking about this train that's going to derail and she sees it. I don't, I don't get it, um, but she seems to be the only one that sees it. So I really do think that um, this sort of thing has to do with trying to show people some cost savings. <laughs> I, One other data point that I'd like to bring in, is that okay? Oh, yeah, 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 absolutely. Um, is that an, an outside um, analytical firm just, just did some projections for the school district and projected that the more town uh, school population is actually supposed to grow by about 11% over the next 10 years, which is like unheard of in, in this climate in rural Vermont. And so when that came out, I thought to myself, I guess naively, 
wow, they, 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 might, they might kind of change their opinion on, on specifically this school, seeing that, but, but they haven't. I thought, I thought, wow, you know, they're going to try to figure out why. You know, catalog all the factors and try to replicate it for, for some of these other towns. And, and then that just didn't come true at all. And then each layer of this just is increasingly perplexing. Um, I thought, oh, wow, you know, we have the Mecca program. Dwayne's leadership led to some really innovative other programming uh, and, and rebranding of the school. Our location is ideal to, to all, you know, the I-89 cor corridor and everything. And, and, and so then, then to see this again on, on the list is just, I, I, don't, I don't understand. Yeah, and I don't see how we're going to have savings if you're talking about one of the options of moving five and seven, or you know, fifth and six out of here, and seven and eight over to Cross at Brook. Like, I don't know how that's going to be cost savings when you're going to have to spend. So they haven't the done any analysis. No. So the plan now is, is that of... we voted on the we voted. Sorry. Yeah. Voted on these options. Um, and now, over the summer, it's going to be put into great detail by administration, and then we're going to get the information back in September. Is there a vote after the information comes back? I believe so. I have to again refresh my memory in October. I think I have to refresh my memory on the timeline. But um, yeah. Oh, you just voted to uh, look at one. Is that correct? Uh, not, not you personally, as a board, you, you guys are going to analyze one. Is that what you said? Three. Oh, you're going to actually do three. Well, there's actually four because there's a status quo. Right. Um, but then mm -hmm. within one of them, which he named, which doesn't name the Valley School, that would be, that would be like uh, that one Valley School would close, but there still would be three. That's a number of options and one. The, a number right. of models and one. Mm -hmm. But so, yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, it was. When I read the value report last week, we had the 10 options. And, but it, Bridget made it very clear that there were three options, I believe, that were supported by the admin team. So were those the three that were voted on? And was it the entire board that voted, or is this so, the admin team? So, no, no, not admin team. Was she, you know, again, she, she gave her whole, this, I can show you my packet, when I have some scribbles on it, but anyways, this packet that we got, which had a little bit more detail into each, not great, but a brief, like, you know, this would have to happen at this option kind of thing. So what, the way it went is that um, you, uh, someone on the board might nominate option B, then second it, then there would be discussion, and then the community got to weigh in before we voted, and then you voted, of course, it's weighted votes, so. Um, right. And unfortunately, you're right, she did, she said, these are the ones that are feasible and these are the ones that aren't, even though we heard them say, well, if, if you have enough money, right, it depends on how much money and effort you want to, you can do whatever you want. Um, she really sort of cut them off about kind of going outside of the box because, well, no, that wouldn't be good or it goes against the splitting of grades, which I get, you know, the, the whole philosophy is like our, our looping and that sort of thing. But when it came down to it, it really was, these are the ones, and sure enough, was that? most of the board members mm -hmm. voted in that, in that way. That makes sense. Mm -hmm. and, the, and some of the ones that were a little outside the box, like a middle school in the valley, um, just to even look at, like maybe it isn't feasible, but. I, I was in know. favor of having that modeled out because you know, my big thing is I want to keep the kids in the valley. Like that's my big thing. I want to keep them here in the valley. So I was in favor of seeing what that looked like. So um, I think a possible option or a possible problem with that fourth option the status quo also rests to the fact that the, the three options include cutting the teachers, significant numbers of teachers. Uh, I think one of the arguments is if you consolidate, you can do more with less. However, I've also heard that the plan is also to increase class sizes um, to a pretty significant number. At the same time, we're also being asked to teach in an entirely different way that requires um, in a, a significant increase in uh, time per student. Um, at the same time, we're asking us to increase class sizes. So 
if we're going to compare these three options that includes massive teacher cuts um, with an option that doesn't include any teacher cuts, it's going to artificially look as if one is, you know, the, one is much, much better. And part of Act 46 was to consolidate governance. The goal of Act 46 was to consolidate governance, not to close small schools, or at least we were told, we were, we were sold that idea. And um, so the, that's, where the, that's where the savings ultimately should have come from. So we haven't even had a chance to think about how we can, under this new model of one board, um, Maybe we have a teacher that travels, a couple teachers where you know it's a lot cheaper to pay for gas than it is a new building. Uh, maybe there are some positions that can get trimmed, some that can get cut. Um, you know, as a as a teacher, um, I don't see a lot of fat to trim necessarily, but um, but it's it's um, I think it's disingenuous to compare three options with cuts mm -hmm. with an option with no cuts. Mm -hmm. And I think and I don't think that uh, the average layman, the average citizen, is going to understand that nuance. They're just going to see numbers. One of the things that came up in the meeting was the fact that the board cut um, the face in third grade. They no longer have third grade. And someone, a board member, said, "Well, what happened to that third grade teacher? You know, are we saving the whatever eighty grand it is to pay their salary? No, we no. That teacher has her job or his job because of." X, Y, and Z, and is under contract, and that's. And I'm not saying they should have gotten rid of the teacher, yeah. but just it just goes to show that just because you cut, it doesn't mean there's any money saved. Mm -hmm. so. I want to point out something about the numbers that doesn't make any sense and seems quite unfair. If you close a school in the town, the savings and taxes, if any, are then distributed through the entire district evenly. So there's no recompense for loss of service and the impact on property values. So that bothers me right off. You know, if they were to pick closed face it. Shouldn't most of the benefit or a large share of the benefit go to face it? And maybe the property values would stay flat if their taxes went down a lot? You know, I don't hear anything like that. This is, let's say, Waterbury money by cutting services someplace else. That's yes. mentioned the fact that there's no guarantee it's going to save anybody money. Right. Yeah. Given yeah. Exactly. Schools in our state. Right. So it is. That's right. right. All right. So I think we all mm -hmm. can agree on that part of the, the equation. But what's the solution for us as a board um, to, to, to work on? I just, I just, just kind of on the record, as a Moortown resident. And your name is just. Matt Hinchin. Matt Hinchin. Hinchin. Off, off way the road. My wife and I. You know, we're looking for a place to, to move. Um, we invested a lot of money in building a new house in the community that had an amazing school. We have three kids, um, two of our kids. One of our kids is already through Moortown, and one is you know, hoping to go through Moortown. And I guarantee you, we would not have moved here had it not been for the school, without a doubt. And there are a number of young families who are looking at Moortown as a very, very viable option to get out of Chittenden County, to get out of Montpelier, but yet to be close. And, um, and as somebody who teaches about community, you know, and, and as somebody who grew up in a community that was devastated by things like this, I just, I feel very passionately that, you know, the loss of small rural communities is not foreordained. It, it's not, it doesn't have to be that way, but it, it will if we lose our school. Um, been here since 1888 and I'm just, so, um, so the question, what do we do, I think is a really good question. Yeah. Yeah. Um, one of the things is um, more towns growing, and I think it would help. I don't know how you or I'm sure you, I'm sure you have the data because we have tax maps. But is there a way that Sasha or you guys or someone can put together the growth that we've had in sales, all the stuff? I mean, like hard facts. I think is the only thing that's going to help. I mean, we can all say, please don't close our school, but if we don't show them, look, we're growing, Waterbury's full, and it is. That's why everybody's moving into more town, because there's places to build and there's places to go. I mean, is there well, I think we can get that. That's easy to get through either the listers or, um, or one of the, some, you get that Cheryl done probably. But to what Peter said earlier, I think earlier this year I had kind of that same fantasy as well. well the numbers are out, 
more town is growing as a as a elementary school we have been back the way up as such that's kind of we're not going to be have that target on our back any longer and so and we obviously still do so your comment to you know facts facts don't seem to play a strong role in this um, debate so far um, the other thing, if I can add, and this is probably going backwards, but the other thing that is on the table is redistricting, and they're looking at, you know, according to the superintendent, there's 40 to 50 kids on the Waterbury side of Moortown, where we live, um, and we drive all the way over here, because we love it, uh, that could go to Waterbury. And so now we're looking at all those Gallagher Acres families who are coming in, and, then, you know, now you're going to put them in Waterbury, Waterbury, which, A, they can't go to preschool, so they probably come here for, I mean, it just makes no sense. Um, I, I just feel like it's sort of like building up that side of our district by decimating this side, and I don't know why, but I would like you all to fix it. <laughs> <laughs> all right, we'll get Please. down the list there, so. <laughs> Yeah, I think we feel your frustration as well, or certainly, you know, we've heard this and we've heard lip service from the superintendent that there's going to be uh, an analysis, there's going to be some transparency, uh, and then the next thing you know, you, you get an option of A, B, or C, um, with no idea of what the main goals are. It, you know, someone can say, well, you know, to save a buck. Well, we'd all like to save a dollar. I mean, every time we come in here, that's what we're talking about. Um, but there's a difference. We need to look at value. And as a town and as a whole, I think the, the, the superintendent is, is certainly not looking at that. To your point, you know, the town's gone without the school. Um, so I think, you know, we need to do some soul searching thinking here and figuring out how best to be involved in the process because we are hoping it's going to change. It obviously is not. Yeah, and I know I'm very frustrated with the fact is probably some of what Peter would feel is that people who haven't had their school threatened don't understand when you see those options up there what that really means. Like the Waterbury people who are voting on the future of the valley, who their decisions don't really affect where they live or their kids or the town that they live in. So that's very frustrating to, yeah, let's just vote. Like you don't understand. And I've expressed this before on certain things, like with the whole not offering third grade at Basin. It's a very big domino effect that you're voting on something that doesn't even affect you. Anyway, that's just... Right, and to Jason's point, it, it basically doesn't get any um, extra benefit from not having a third grade as far as having their, their taxes lower because their cost is less. So um, I, I thank everyone for coming in. Um, One more quick question. Sure, just, uh, do they have specific bond numbers associated with each of those options yet? No, of course. <laughs> I think your job, Kristen, at these meetings is you gotta slow this thing down. And people are not gonna be happy with you, some people around the table, but um, but your job is not to make them happy. Your job is to to make a, a process like what we're talking about, and we'll do our part, but you know, so what you can do, we would appreciate, um, you know, and what we're looking for, we're looking for a goal, we're looking for transparency. I mean, we, at one point, you know, there was talk about, all right, let's have some meeting in the in the in the towns. You know, take some, take your meeting on the road, so that each town would have an opportunity. People aren't going to run up to Harwood, but you know what? You come here next Tuesday night. Probably could get a few more people here in and each town. Yeah, and that's one of the things that, like, I think. Again, I can review the timeline, but whenever these options are going to be presented to the public, there's only two, I believe there's only a couple of opportunities in October or whatever, and I'm really going to, you know, be pushing for more. I mean, once we get our meetings back in September, even at our retreat, I'm going to express them that you can't do things like this with just two meetings and then say, well, you know, they can always email us. That's, that's not okay. You know, that's not, that's 
But then if you start fully apart those options you got, there's really not much for options there because there's still, look at it, it's all spiraling down, spiraling down to the same thing. Mm -hmm. With a few little ancillary changes here, here, moving the dots. So they're all the same and they're all with one thing in mind, what your superintendent had in mind. It's not what a collective audience put together. Um, and what your board needs to understand is that the superintendent works for you guys, right? You're elected to run that office. She reports to you, reports to you, does not dictate. And unfortunately, with the mergers, uh, with their um, manipulation of the process, I mean, they have lawyers on both sides telling the school boards and also advising them on how to, to district this. So it's put you guys, as a, as a board, um, at a disadvantage. However, remember, you are the person that holds the key to the wallet. Right. And you guys got to start running the board. Don't let you know the tail wag the dog here, which is happening. You know? Yeah, I'm being very honest. I love the school board. I was very upset and very emotional because I felt completely railroaded by the entire thing. You know, but now, I, I mean, that's why Peter left. Peter was, you know, he, he got his frustrations with it, and he sees that, you know, I can fight better from the outside because it's, you know, it's, I'm sure it's frustrating in there. And depending on what the other board members, because it's staff, because as you mentioned, Kristen, certain people want status quo. So, you know what? They don't have the guts to stand up and say, no, it's not right, this process. Yeah. Because it benefits us. So yeah, I'm I'm not a happy camper. I'm not really happy yeah. about all this, and so that's it's yeah. And like I said, I'm gonna have a conversation with Charlie tomorrow morning, and I'm just gonna lay it all out there. I mean, it's just it's not okay. It's not okay what happens. It's not okay to be railroaded. You know, I think that there were people that went in that meeting that had agendas, and these agendas were talked about, and then that's how it went. And the way to voting is clearly a very big problem because of, you know, you get railroaded. So. Yeah, would it be a possibility for the, for the select board to write a letter that we could deliver to the board, that our rep could deliver to the board, sharing our concerns, our great concerns, and asking for, for clarification? Absolutely, we'll do that. Sure. Yeah. Right. Definitely. When's your meeting? When's your next Wednesday? Next Wednesday. The 26th. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Okay. We'll, uh, we'll get something to uh, Kristen. And then we, we, we have a retreat in August, but we're, you know, that's it for the summer. And then we have a retreat August 28th, and then they start up in September again. So. Thank you all. All right, thanks a lot. Yeah, everyone can sign in for you. Do you want me to make you a copy of the packet? Oh, perfect. That would be awesome. And then what do you can do, can you get that to Sasha? Or Cheryl? Or one of the two? Excuse me if I have notes. That's all right. It's funny they don't say anything nasty about us. Danville, and they kind of lost their school. It's amazing what property values are. 
Yeah. Yeah. My sister in Rochester, yeah. same thing. Think about how much taxes have to go down to have the same effect on property values. Yeah. It's not a realistic number of what happened. No. It is, it is, it amazed me that, uh, what, mm -hmm. what a difference that, that mm -hmm. makes. So, I think it's so, so I, I mean, on the other hand, you know, there are some ideas that probably could be worked out that might be a little more cost effective, maybe moving one or two grades might give large enough classes that they could have optimum class sizes and a few fewer teachers. But, you know, no really big thing. Right. First of all, you got a growing school here, too. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. to someone's point, let's look mm -hmm. at why we have a growing school. And, you know, I think the, or fairly obvious, some of it, you had the Mecca, you had mm -hmm. a great leadership here. And again, um, part of Bridges' plan was to you know, bomb that by taking the out of mm here. -hmm. I mean, that was planned. I mean, you, you start taking the energy out. And so. Mandy's doing an excellent job of keeping it going over there. Yeah, so I think yeah. that we're, we're good there. But, um, so stay tuned. We need to. I do like the idea of fifth, sixth, seventh, and eighth together. Yeah. Because as a Harvard student walking in freshman year and you meet all the kids from Waterbury, <laughs> awkward for probably this first six months because mm -hmm. all of the valley schools had time to bond, the Waterbury side had time to bond, and you didn't get the time to bond together until mm -hmm. that freshman mm -hmm. year. So it, I mean, it was awkward, it's different, you don't know anybody. So having that together would be nice, only for that aspect of like being together, or if you're not gonna do that, mm -hmm. maybe give them some more activities together. Exactly. There's something useful. But that's the yes. only reason yeah. why. Yeah, I think there's, yeah, so you can, uh, and the traveling teachers, I mean, you get your, mm -hmm. you know, your resources. I mean, I think that's fine. I mean, that way all the students can still make mm -hmm. or have those resources available to them. But, you know, anyways. And the weights for private daycare are ridiculous. Yeah. Like, the college kids, ridiculous. <laughs> and expensive. I know when I'm like years ago when I was doing it, how expensive it was. You know, it's gone down. Yeah, and to get in because everyone's trying to do it. They're, it's crazy. It is interesting about the, talking about moving the administrative offices to Morgan. Since for 10 years, Bridget has wanted to move into the high school. So now, now one of the options is moving to Morgan. <laughs> Nice to have that neighbor right there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's about finding a place to park, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, it's good. I'm glad everyone, they came in. And, uh, so, you know, let's give some thought. You know what, I think what I'll do is um, we'll put something together for the rest of the board to see. I may talk to Ron about it as well. I know Ron's going to come in later mm -hmm. tonight. I think, um, you know, Worth our while to have him uh, take a look at some facts. Things. Yeah. Yeah, Peter's Peter right. Peter knows the facts. Yep. So, all righty. Uh, let's move forward. Uh, reports and communications. <laughs> watershed and Somebody's looking for a for Vermont Community Leadership Summit. Hello, folks. This is from Pam, Pam uh, DeAndrea. Um, did you happen to go through this? What are they looking for here? With the watersheds? No, I didn't. That reached this cause. Just information for the board. No, they have to choose someone to on the watershed. On one of those, they have to choose someone from the board if they want a town representative. So this looks like they're after they're looking. Um, there's some opportunity for um, funds for the watershed. So let's let's take a look at this. Looks like they're looking now. Uh, Mr. Swelling need two or three criteria, so we'll look through, see if uh, more time is eligible, and if we are, we can go forward with that. 
Uh, all right, and then now we're, okay, this is from uh, Vermont Community Leadership Summit, and they're looking to see if there's anyone in town we would like uh, to go to the summit. It's at August 12th at VTC. Um, and they're looking to design a local leader participate. Can it be anyone? Um, it looks like they're talking about economic development. They're talking about um, someone who's provided leadership on a community project, does community things. Um, this person could be a community volunteer, uh, a municipal official, or an energetic young person who would like to celebrate and encourage. Um, New ideas. Anyone have any idea of anyone around this table like to be that person? <laughs> Seeing nobody. You know, actually, when I saw this, what I was thinking of is um, what about Corey from the library? The librarian. Oh, yeah. Well, let me reach out to her and see if she's would sure. be interested in going to this. Yeah. yeah. Do you think it might be useful to put that up on the front porch forum and see if anybody is interested? Or we could do it that way. I don't know. We're both. Well, let's, let's do one that I won't ask them if they want to do it okay. and then uh, put it out there. Front porch forum first? Yeah. Huh. Take a look at just the criteria, kind of what I, you know, right here, and see we're looking to, you know, is there someone out there that would like mm -hmm. to uh, do that? It's free. Um, typically, I think it's 50 bucks, yeah. and it's BTC, includes lunch, and that yeah, should be an interesting thing to do. Maybe, yeah. hopefully, we can get some new energy in town. To do some like that. Is that it? Sure. Yeah. Did anyone uh, start doing it? No. <laughs> Kelly, did you have anything for? Uh, um, news or communications at all? Yeah. You do? Yeah, I was walking my dog and got stopped. Um, Benny Bear checked in with me. I guess he had an issue with one of the members of the department outside of department things for the fire department. Okay. But was wearing a fire department t shirt and he had some concerns around that and representing the department. So I just mm -hmm. passed that on to Stefan and he's going to address it. Who okay. was it? I talked to you? But you don't, you don't know? It was Benny there. And it was all oh, Benny. It was Randy. Gotcha. So, Stephen's going to have a discussion with the yeah, officers about it. Yeah, it's probably one of those things where they do, if you're wearing your Moortown Fire Department t shirt, be careful what you're doing. Mm -hmm. you know, and mm -hmm. with your officer plate on. Yeah. Yeah. Good. All right, so you pass it on to Stephon? Yes, I did. Very good, thank you. Thank you. John? Uh, I spoke with Michelle Beer regarding um, a management plan in the uh, town property, and so she's going to be talking with the rest of the rec committee at the next meeting, and we'll take it from there. Very good. All right, Jason, you know that? Jason does can remember. Uh, we've got the uh, town hall started to be painted. I don't know if you've noticed that. Uh, one side. Um, we need to get some more paint for tomorrow, right? So I'll take care of that in the morning for those guys. Um, and I think that's about it. I've, yeah, I've had actually people calling on it and have commented that they liked it. So we're in the right direction. Anything would look better than what it did. Um, Shane is supposed to be here and obviously is not with a dog complaint. I have, he and I have passed calls back a few different times. I had asked him, and I know that Sasha had one point or Shale did the same thing to ask him to bring, to invite um, both Riley and his owners and um, the complainants here. And so that has not happened. Yeah, okay. Riley was on the leash the other day. I'm glad to see that. Yeah, so uh, <laughs> until then, and I will 
press that to find out what's happened and try to get all parties here so we can get people to. Is this the same? Right. Oh. It's, it, it, so, yeah, Katrina, you were here. How long ago was that? A year and a half? Ago? It was over a year ago. Or it was last summer, at least. Do you last remember spring? if he gave him a, them a fine? I wrote a letter for him. We've not he didn't find him. No. no. There's eyes. Yeah. yeah. All right. He's written a. He wrote. Had me write a letter for him, but he. It was not a fine letter. It was threatening a fine. Right. Okay. Just yeah. wanted to check. For some reason, I thought he had. They just hadn't paid it. But um. You know, so let's wait until we hear, hear back and uh, make sure. But my point is to, with him, and I will follow up with him. Continue to lead. We get some resolution on that, and I'm asking him to continue to make sure anything he's doing is documenting, um, but to make sure that he is doing it as well. I mentioned to him that you know this is serious business. If someone gets bit, right? That you know. Yeah, and I'm happy to that Saffron is a sort of very conscientious. They always have their dogs on leashes. I know because my dog's barking. <laughs> but they can't go down there because they've got their collars. <laughs> right, and uh, Rothenberg, they, their dog doesn't have to be on a leash, but just can't leave their property, right? Right, right, exactly. And so if it's leaving the property, then that's a violation. But if it's just at the edge of the property, then there's really nothing that we can, we can do. But, right. Because that's in some of the complaints that I've read, that's you know gone by and the dogs, you know, when they're probably walking around, so that doesn't uh, constitute a, um, a violation. Right, but I mean, it, you know, it's on the video, it clearly was a Oh yeah, yeah, right. yeah. yeah. No, I is <laughs> a problem. I'm not <laughs> just you don't get any of that. That's why I'm like everyone trying to get your limits. I know we had that work out. But it seemed to work for a year and a half, so. All right, yeah. let's get people here. Um, so let's go ahead and move on to the personnel policy revisions. Can I just make one thing? Go right ahead, sure. Um, this is a report of your expenses as of today. We have for each of you. Um, I want to let you know that the big grant that we have, the catch basin and the sidewalk grant, has been reconciled. Um, the numbers agreed with the numbers on the expenses since 2014 to the present. All the um, income that is on um, the spreadsheet matches what's in the computer system. So everything on that big grant is balanced for sharing when we take over. So there's, you know, for, um, it's been audited. Okay. So. Okay. Um, McClay called today, McClay Architects. Um, they wanted permission to come into the building and take pictures of their architectural work, what the building looks like in here, and the offices, and the outside. And I said that I was not giving that permission, that I would come to the board. And I mean, right. I think we can see this, right? Huh? That's, that's interesting. I think. Yeah, they want to put it as um, on their new face on their new website. Hmm. I didn't find that about seventy-five bucks an hour. Or something like that. They could take pictures, right? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, last time we dealt with them, didn't we, they push back and we asked them to do something for us? So we wanted to on, the ball, on the ball, right? Yes. And that's why I didn't say, yeah, okay, come on down. I uh, don't know how you feel about it, but. Take pictures and sell them. <laughs> <laughs> I can't say on one hand that um, things turned out well for us, and on the other hand, let them come into the building and put it on their website. That's not me. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah, because we ended up spending uh, mm. some additional money just because of. And they told that I mean, they're the ones that designed this thing, they're the ones that guaranteed it. And then it... Basically. Well, 
it's not that bad if people see that and then say, hmm, I know, let's call more towns for reference and see how they did and, and tell them. Yeah. To, uh, to I, I don't have a problem with it for that reason. But mm -hmm. Somebody who's seriously interested would ask us. John, what do you think? No, I, I, I agree. I don't. I don't think we should. Okay. Mm -hmm. Are you yeah. So you know what? Based on our um, past experience, past, past experience, experience, yeah, not really displeasure, just yeah, just past experience. Yeah. So, but we passed this point. Yeah, ending that with at this time is probably good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Anything else, Cheryl? This is your last meeting with us, right? Our last meeting. I uh, thank you for everything. It's been enjoyable. Well, certainly I'll be in the next couple weeks in here to work with you on some things, but uh, that's been something, huh? 20 years? Yep, I'm 21, basically, by the time I leave. Yep. Any regrets? <laughs> no, no regrets. No, no I, I love my job. It's just time to move on. Yeah. Oh, we're still young, you know. We can. My brother's got a place in New York, Maine. And it's time to do other things. Yeah. Got well, Harley and. Yeah. Well, you've been a tremendous asset for the town. Oh, thank uh, you. Everything that you've done, you put a lot of heart and soul. Uh, you know, we've gone above and beyond what, you know, an employer would ask um, someone to do for them. Uh, you know, we've been very, very fortunate. Um, and everyone here in town, I, I speak with, says the same. They, you know, time some of them have gotten frustrated with you, but you're right, they say. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and, uh, no, I think, you know, it'll be hard to, you know, I think Sasha's going to do a very good job, but it's going to be, you know, those big shoes to fill. And uh, we're lucky we have you, you know, giving us a little time between now and the end of the year. Thank you. Uh, yeah. as me on the board, I, you know, you've helped me out tremendously. Um, yeah. You know, you know I talk, you know, a lot, uh, you know, both, uh, you know, professionally and, and personally, I, I, I thank you. And John is the head yeah, right here. Yeah, yeah. I've had the, the longest history with you, and certainly those years have been wonderful. And I certainly thank you for all the support over those yeah. years. And, and uh, you know, I, I, I think of you as, as part bulldog and part golden retriever. <laughs> 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 Not about comedy. Yeah, but in a hell of a cook, too. <laughs> really can put some uh, treats together. So we all thank you. And I know that everyone here, uh, I'm sure, feels the same way. And uh, it was a nice, uh, nice party. Beautiful so, party. Yeah, very nice party. Perfect. Yeah. Very good idea. So anyway, so let's go ahead and move and look at the personnel policy revisions. Summarize, show what has changed so people are aware. I think most people have gone over it, but. Yes, these changes, all, every change that was made in here has been a suggestion from VLCT and VLCT's um, legal to help protect the town, the employee, um, and our insurance and to clear up some of the language to make it uh, uh, clear and cover more of the bases. Um, and some is uh, legally, was legally needed. You know, the new regulations for um, time off for family time mm -hmm. and um, 
drug and alcohol testing and yep. I've gone through it. I don't see anything in there that seems terribly um, restrictive or and it seems very well put together. So. It does seem very well put together. The language is good, mm -hmm. clear. Also, with that, we will have two new applications that were supplied by VLCT. One is for an application for a CDL operator, um, if we hire a new CDL operator. Um, <clears throat> the second would be for an employee such as myself or, you know, an other employee who do not have CDLs. Mm -hmm. um, Okay. So if you see if you've seen something in there. Yep. Um, very, very minor stuff. Uh, page 19, last sentence. Town should have town should have an apostrophe in it. Page five, that should be issued, not issued. Fourth line down. Should be issued means that? Yeah. And then there's a bit of a, a logic problem with the language. And maybe we should just let the LTC know. This is in regard to controlled substances. Page four has an absolute prohibition on it, and then it is conditional on page five, and those two things aren't direct, aren't compatible. On page four, you said it's okay. Yeah. Second line down, yeah. second red paragraph. It's, that's not conditional. That's not absolute prohibition. Prohibition. And then there's the next one. And then on page five, if you have a properly issued prescription, it's fine. Cool. Well, that says under the influence of illegal drugs. Control, control, control substances. So controlled substances yeah. include controlled substances for which you have a valid prescription. Mm. Yeah, just let them know it's not something you should involve in fixing. Just don't worry. Page six. So, was there any change there that? You're uh, recommending Jason on that. Mm -hmm. Probably just including the same parentheses that are on page five, also on page four. Thank you. Oh, yeah, just to explain yeah. this control Jill some of that. Just yeah. 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 Because what they're saying is not what they meant. Gotcha. All right, so those. Yeah. Can you move this conversation, Jason, and make a motion? Sure. <laughs> um, I move that we accept the revised personnel policies as amended. Is there a second? I think it's a little bit confusing. So if we have the full-time employee town pays the 686.76 agreement for single plan dependent, I, I think it probably makes sense just to have the dependent premium for a two-person plan and the dependent premium for a full family plan. 
because under the health reimbursement account, that's how you do it. You show thirteen hundred for the employee, but six fifty for the dependent. Oh. Mm -hmm. So I mean, it's either one way or the other. Either we have a you know what we pay for a single plan and a two-person plan or and a family plan, um, and then what we do for the health reimbursement for a single or for uh, dependents, or we just have the additional premium that we pay for the mm -hmm. dependents. Mm -hmm. And I, 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 I think it's best to have the additional premium yep. for dependents. I agree with you. Minus the 686, mm -hmm. 76, and those figures in the last box. Correct. Mm -hmm. Correct. Mm -hmm. You got that, Sasha? That's what my notes Anything else, John? Uh, no, that was the only thing I said. So then does that have to be, sorry, does that then have to be 10 pays X dollars of additional premium for two person plan? Correct. Right, that would be, mm -hmm. right, the difference between the 103014 and the 68676. Right. And then the language would say additional premium both Correct. for the two person right. plan. Right, right, exactly. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I think looking at like vacation leave, their vacation time doesn't roll over. So if you don't use it, you lose it. Mm -hmm. And most places have a rollover. So you can roll over a certain amount each year, or you can roll over up to a certain amount. Mm -hmm. I know I can have up to 380 something hours of time saved, but even if it's just like you can roll over Right. Five days did, a year. Like last year, they came at the end of the year mm -hmm. and asked if they could roll over. Cheryl do you, or John, do you have history? Is there a reason why they don't do that or you haven't done that? Well, it's just a cut benefit, really. Um, we used to be able to accrue up to five days. Right. And then the select board mm -hmm. um, removed that. Were there any issues with people taking one stretch of vacation days at one time as a result of that? I don't recall I, that there was any problem. Uh, I thought there was a, a problem once in the winter, but... I think that the winter employees can't take a vacation or time off without yeah, the early. approval of their right, supervisor, right. and that's been changed since then. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't certainly have a, plan, uh, a problem personally with doing that. I don't know if you guys if we can come up with a number. Well, it doesn't have to be a lot because, mm -hmm. I mean, mm -hmm. really. Uh, the five is that? Uh, yeah, yeah, I'm yeah. thinking starting a little bit lower but and see how it works out. But I, I don't Typically, what do they have? How many days are they? Most well, everyone has two weeks. Once you've been here over 10, over 10 years, you have three mm -hmm. weeks. And when you've been here over 15 years, you have right, so 15 we'll, we'll all be dead to by 20. the time you worry about that. So don't <laughs> <laughs> worry about that. So don't worry about that. Right. And this board will be gone. Well, Junior, Shane, I don't know. Those guys won't even worry about that. <laughs> Three to five is, is fine with me. It really, because if the most they have is, pretty much most of them have is 10. They're taking a day, you know, how many are they going to have at the end of the year? Mm -hmm. I mean, quite frankly. Yes. I mean, this would include you as well. Um, you know. Where I work now, it's five days. Yeah, you can keep the extra. And I get two. Yeah, I mean, I, I think like mm -hmm. after two years of employment, you know, they, they carry three, three days. I mean, it'd be silly if, you know, in their first year. Right. Yeah, because they're yeah. carrying over. They're going to use yeah, those yeah, five right, days. Right, right. Yep. Mm -hmm. So, and, and I think three days makes makes sense. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. what we start there. Yeah. After two years of employment, you can carry over three years. I think at this point, aside from uh, mm -hmm. uh, Stefan, I think that covers most of them. I mean, 
been here almost two years, so yeah. All right, an example yeah. in my case, because I've gone full time, mm -hmm. have I been considered here at least two years? Yeah, sure. <laughs> <laughs> He's taking the decision as you go out the door. I love that. You've got to be careful here in the next couple of weeks. Yeah, sure. <laughs> you know what? I mean, you've been, you've been here for, and getting the benefits anyway, but only part-time benefits, right? But you know what, Sasha, we're not going to make a policy on that, but if at the end of the year you want to move some days, for just come to the board and we'll work with you on that. I, I will be here at least until next March, so I can uh, make that decision. So how many years have you been here at Port Time? I've been here since the day before Irene hit, so that was what, 2011? 2011, I've been here a long time. So if you just took the, your time here and multiplied it by the percentage of time over here, you're well over that. Yeah, I've been so, here over two years. All right. So, um, any other discussions on the? We have a motion on the floor here on the uh, personnel policy. Did you get clear on what John was saying? Yes, I, I guess we need to add that to the motion. <laughs> After two years, you can go over for well, days. Yeah, it's a bit still, still imagine. On the, yeah. on the dependent pay. Yes. 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 Okay. Yep. All right, so we've got the two, two changes, or I don't know, we've got some mm -hmm. um, grammatical changes or grammatical changes from, from Jason, but also uh, the two from John on there in his motion. Um, any other discussion? All in favor, vote aye. Aye. All right. Aye. Thank you. Now let's go ahead and move on uh, any old business. As soon as Ron gets here, we'll go into Montgomery Timber business. Other than that, down below, there's not a lot. Mm -hmm. Sidewalk stuff, Cheryl, any updates? Um, the state has approved everything. Um, as far as the right away goes, they have the bid documents now that they're looking over for approval. Uh, Chris Hunt doesn't think that there's going to be a problem on those. They're pretty, she's pushing them through quite quickly, so um, the bid should go out by the end of June. We have um, $400,000 left and the two grants that were combined together, the sidewalk grant. Um, we've spent, um, it was $525,000 grant combined, and we've spent $77,000 so far. So we have mm, okay. mm -hmm. um, when the When the bids come back in, I explained that process to you. Mm -hmm. When the bids come back in, it will ultimately be this board's decision on um, who to hire. If the bids come back in way higher than the money we have, um, we'll pull in Chris Hunt. I have new figures from the state of Vermont and what other projects cost that I'm using for, um, that we are using, Sharon is using to apply for another grant that we're working on. So. We have up-to-date numbers. We know for a fact that this grant happened in 2014. It's, the labor's going to happen and the project's going to happen in 2020. So I'm confident that if the bids come in higher than what money we have, we that we can work more. with mm -hmm. the state. <clears throat> we have good points. We met with um, a fellow from the committee who turned down the grant that was written in 2018. We know where the weak points are. We have pretty much verbatim on what should be put in there. And we were strongly advised to apply for the grant again for the west side of the parking lot. 
Mm -hmm. We get the west side of the parking lot, you probably will have a bond vote to cover the town share because you remember the other share on this side of the street was covered with children's deer yard money? No. That's 10%, the town share is 10% um, cost, 10% of the grant cost. Um, <clears throat> the catch basin grant is a little bit different. I just did an invoice today for $4,000 or so to charge back Harvard for 5% of that grant because it's the catch basins that are going on in the school and the agreement was that they would pay right. 5%. Mm -hmm. so. Um, what are you, is there anything that you need in the next few weeks before you, you know, you sign off from us or that needs to be real critical stuff that needs to be passed to anyone else or is it everything now going away? Yeah, I'm doing that as I go. Yeah. All this information that I just said has been gone over with Sharon and it's written down step for step when we do something. She's there, she makes notes just like Sasha is when we do something. When Sasha builds Howard for the time that the road crew yep. works, it's all documented. FEMA's schedules are all there, she has all that. She's doing that now once or twice. She's done it twice. Done it twice, and I'm there and I look it over. Um, so, those are the type of things when we come in that will be crucial to look at. It's just making sure that those. Uh, you know, eyes have been crossed and T's, so mm -hmm. T's crossed, I thought. <laughs> um, you know, all those little things we're not missing out. I think, you know, they certainly, Sasha has a good handle on the day-to-day -day operations, and then you come in here, you, you know, you deal with people. And you That's a deal with yeah. <laughs> um, uh, code bills, yeah, it's, it's code the bills for everything from the engineering and whatnot's going on to the sidewalk part. And all the construction money will come out of the hedge basin part. It's just the way the state wanted it for now. So, yeah, it's a little confusing, but I'm going to get it. Yeah. Oh, yeah, she's getting it. Very good. Um, and we do, are certain bronze coming at 7.30? Yeah. I've got two things from the business. All right. Um, Local sports would like permission for their 100 on 100 relay race in August. Yes. It's on a portion of Route 100, and we just want to okay for that. That's, I think, fine. We do that every year. Mm -hmm. And after almost 12 years on the Planning Commission, I have decided to move on. Please accept this as my resignation effective June 4, 2019. I found great pleasure in serving the town over the past year. This is um, Ruth. So, sure. so on that, we should um, post that on front page form. Okay. As far as, um, you know, why don't we thank him first? Mm -hmm. Say, you know, what we would like to say, or what we do say. And then follow it up with, now we're looking for someone new. And if at the next meeting, um, there's, you know, you have, you know, put a couple weeks out on the, the notice, and then not probably the next meeting, but the following meeting, we can meet anyone that needs to, that would like to participate. So I'll make a motion that we accept Bruce's uh, resignation. Second. Senator Kelly, all in favor, all right. Thank you. Aye. Any other new business? No. I have one. Uh, Fourth has been involved. Um, right. So the lot this year and last year doing it. Um, last year we started with like two thousand dollars when I started on the committee, and this year we started with like two thousand um, dollars. Of course, every year everything goes up. Um, the fireworks were supposed to be four thousand, but I got them to do it for thirty-five hundred one more time. So that's just starting next year, we need $4,000, and right now we don't have enough money for this year. So it very, very well may not be more of this next year. We've asked all the people that always donate to us. We've gotten one new donor. Um, 
I'm not sure what else we can do to raise money. I was going to, I actually sent an email to everybody today asking if they thought maybe we should just put a post on Front Porch Forum saying that we don't, if you want to keep going, then we need help. Mm -hmm. Like a couple things. Um, I wondered if maybe you could have uh, some kind of a Dropbox the day of more fest, you know, kind of, I know, going into the uh, area here, mm -hmm. if there was something, because, you know, we had hundreds of people in there, we would drop a couple bucks. We did, it yeah, we did it last year, and we got like a hundred bucks. All right. So yeah. That. And we talked about doing um, maybe a really small, silent auction mm -hmm. at more fest with like big ticket items mm -hmm. to help me raise money. Um, how much have we given you anything this far? 500 you give us every year. Yeah. Um, so we, we paid for the fireworks and we have like 20 bucks right now, right? Something like that. Okay. And one thing we have to pay for um, that we agreed with the PTO last year was that we would we would pay for the sheriff last year. And that was our agreement with them that we would pay for the sheriff. Um, because we're not, more fest isn't it to make money, right. they are. <laughs> so, um, so that's $350 right there that we don't have. Um, and then, you know, uh, we did, we did a few other small things, but really that's, oh, and the porta potty, we paid for the, the extra porta potty for the weekend. So it's like 350, 450 that we still need to raise for this year. Um, Blossoms gave us $1,000 of the money that we have, so that was one big new donor. We didn't do, last year we did Cinco de Mayo, which raised $2,500. So that's the difference between last year and this year. Um, but I've run out of people to ask. <laughs> um, I don't know. I just want to let you know that I'm not sure. It's the, the fireworks is a big cost, and next year it's going to be $4,000, that's the minimum. And without the fireworks, I think you'll lose everybody. Yeah. yeah. I mean, that's to draw people. Just, yeah. yeah. I mean, you see them all start coming at dusk. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, we have we have the beer tent. It's going to be two different people. I don't know if I'm allowed to announce that, so I won't. Uh, and then we have all our food vendors from last year, plus the fire department, plus another person. We already have, I mean, everything's set, which is way ahead than normal. So it's going to be a full field, plus it won't be a car show, it'll be touch a truck, but E-Trans is coming, there's race cars coming, our guys, fire department, ambulance, are all coming. Well, um... 50-50? We did that. It's like 100 bucks. <laughs> but, I mean, it's, it, you, there is things to do. I mean, we could, I could probably guarantee that we could probably raise $500 at this year's event. That's a far thing from 2000 starting with. And everybody that, um, there wasn't anybody that gave last year that didn't give this year. Blossoms was the only new one. But it was the, yeah, the Cinco de Mayo, not, nobody wanted to do it. Well, we will, you know, I think we should put that out there and... Is, do you think that would be okay to do a post? I mean, because we, we also need volunteers the day of the event, too, so I was going to kind of lump it all yeah. Yeah, type of thing. Yeah. You know, done right. Mm -hmm. Do you want to review that first? Yeah, before you send it out. Oh, I send it to Sasha first. Send it to Sasha first. Because I didn't want to do it myself. And, uh, you know, then as a town, we can, you know, we can, we can talk about it mm -hmm. as we can see it's mm -hmm. something that we want. Not to support. I mean, I know it's a lot of town uh, play, if you will. It does, and there a lot of people respond. I mean, not a lot of people. And I know yeah. we spend money on other things sometimes. You know, a couple thousand dollars here might be better spent than some of the other money. <laughs> if anyone wants to make a personal donation, you can write text it to So we'll just wait a couple more minutes if Ron does not get here. Oh. What'd you say? I'm not stuck to sign. Yeah, I don't know. Can you go for a minute? And I got clarification on the sure. CAI. This price does include the dimensions. 
Okay. And they're at the top of the email, so mm -hmm. you get that signed tonight. The library has a new person, and they need approval on that. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. And then there's letter of intent to participate. There's, it's for two different grants for um, Challenge. Yeah, like <laughs> 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 you know what? Yeah. Thank you, Sasha. Ah. Okay, Tom, you signed this already. So All right. Is that Hey, Ron. Thank you. That's all we do. <laughs> Come on out. We're just signing things, getting done. We are going to move in to uh, executive session here. Oh, yeah. Who wants a topic? I'm uh, So I move 